Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies, I'm Halfling Hannah, and if you are looking to add some gritty reality to your world, crime syndicates are a great option. In this little mini-series, we're going to be looking at five different crime syndicates and how to make them for your world. So, here we go! Alright humanoids, small disclaimer, obviously drugs are bad and don't do them. Also, this is a little more mature of content, um, so you know, maybe don't watch this around the kids because we are talking about crimes and narcotics. So consider yourself warned. Alright, so our first one that we're going to talk about is drug syndicates. This video is all about drug syndicates. Um, I'm going to uh, give you some examples based on my newest ebook, which is Welcome to Ignosi. This is all about crime bosses and syndicates and gives you five complete syndicates that you can include into any campaign or use Ignosi as its own setting. Uh, if you love Halfling Hobbies and you want to support us, buying that newest ebook is a great way to do that. Also, you get that ebook as part of the Halfling Heroes tier on Patreon, so consider joining Patreon as well. So let's get started. If you are looking to create a drug syndicate to put in your world, you're going to want to look at five things. One, product. Two, production. Three, transportation. Four, drug dealers. And five, drug users. Focus on these five things and answer these questions, to which I'm going to give you examples as well because I have a drug syndicate in Ignosi, so if you don't want to create your own, you can use mine, but I'm going to give you examples of how to do each of these. So let's start with number one, the product. How do you come up with a fantasy drug for your world? Because it's pretty cool that we're in a fantasy setting, generally, uh, where you can add in some different effects that maybe normally wouldn't occur. Here's how I did it. Number one, I got inspiration from real world narcotics. Uh, not from experience, but from Google. I would much suggest doing it that way. Um, Cause remember, drugs are bad. So look at different uh, narcotics and their effects. This is a great way to get some ideas for what you might want in your world. For example, I created three main drugs for um, Ignosi. The first one is Wiz, or Wizard's Little Helper, which is based on Ritalin. People in real life take Ritalin, um, you know, for ADHD, but if you don't have ADHD, it really helps you focus and concentrate and gives you like this crazy amount of energy, right? So I use this for specifically wizards. It helps wizards to uh, get a bonus if they're trying to do a concentration save uh, during battle, and it also helps them to record spells in half the time. However, the downside is that it keeps them awake, so they're going to get levels of exhaustion once it wears off. The next one is Fairy Dragon Dust, which is based on angel dust in real life. This is known for giving the user an out-of-body experience and making them numb to pain. They, they literally don't feel pain, and it makes them stronger. So of course, this pairs perfectly with barbarians. So I made Fairy Dragon Dust, which does basically the same thing. Gives them extra advantage on strength, gives them um, the ability to not feel pain, and to rage, um, because one of the parts of, of dust dust is um, emotional instability. So it allows them to rage um, as a reaction and also to not lose rage if they don't take damage or deal damage in their round uh, because they are irrational, basically. And the downside of that is that they have to roll on the short term and if they take enough of it, long term insanity charts, which is always fun. And then finally, the last one was Green Dragon. This is based on real life mushrooms and gives the, uh, the user a feeling of euphoria and happiness and hallucinations. The downside to this one is that any kind of perception checks they're gonna have disadvantage on because they're hallucinating things. Um, and maybe even sometimes, depending on the situation, maybe they automatically fail and because they're, they're hallucinating and they don't know what's real and what isn't. So as you can see, 
if you look at real world things, it can give you a lot of really good ideas for drugs in your own world. But the main thing to focus on is benefits and side effects. With each one of those, there were benefits to taking them, but also side effects. And you want to keep that balanced because it always is going to be a risk if your players want to take these drugs and if there are any that occur in um, the world around them. So keep that balanced. Also, you're going to want to look at the description of these drugs. Um, write out uh, what they look like, uh, what they taste like or feel like when, they, when they're used, and also the, the mode that they're used in. For mine, Wiz was a pill, um, just like Ritalin. Uh, Fairy Dragon Dust, you had to inhale it, so there was a little bag that you could stick your fingers in and inhale. Uh, and then with the Green Dragon, it was actually a vial of green gas that you would inhale. Um, so think through your descriptions of those things and have them on hand if your players ask, stumble across them, or anything like that. The next part you're going to want to think about is number two, production. This is specifically tied to how your drug is made. For example, with the fairy dragon dust, it is made using the ground wings of actual fairy dragons, meaning that you're going to want your production site set up somewhere around an entrance perhaps to the Fey Wild or to uh, a woods or an area where fairy dragons are common. Or maybe it's going to be um, some kind of farm. You're going to need to mass produce fairy dragons, so you're going to have to capture some, breed them and you have these breeding farms in order to create the drug. All of this creates different locations and settings based on how the drug is produced. So you're going to want to think through that. Uh, what would you need to produce this drug? And how is that going to, how, how's that going to happen? Then create the locations that you're going to need and place them in your world. Perhaps your uh, intrepid explorers can come across one of these farms and realize how horrible and inhumane it is and then figure out it from there. Or perhaps they learn about what it's actually made of and decide that they want to go on a campaign to uh, eliminate this horrible trade. Whatever it is, it's going to have a big impact on your world understanding um, the production. So three questions here. How is your drug made? Where is it produced? And who is producing it? Number three is transportation. Wherever your drug is produced, it's going to be, need to be transported to the place where it is in most demand. Usually this is going to be a city of some kind. So how do you get it from the production site secretly and safely to the distribution site. Um, there are many ways to do this, uh, many underground channels, however you want to. Um, in my case, Green Dragon is produced uh, outside of the city on farms, and it is transported into the city in secret compartments in produce wagons that are brought into the city to sell produce. It is then transported all over the city in hat boxes. So you have these different fronts that are set up. So you've got the, the produce stalls and you've got a hat shop that are all set up throughout the city in order to transport these drugs in a secret and secure manner. Think through exactly how you want to get your drugs to the distribution site and then from there secretly throughout the city. This is very, very important because competition can steal your, pro your product if you're not doing it secretly and securely. So think through those options. Number four, you have dealers. Once your drugs have gotten out into the city, uh, they're going to go to specific dealers. There are several things to think through here, but basically you're going to be creating NPCs at this point. Uh, you'll want one leader who's in kind of in charge of everything. Maybe they don't deal directly with the drugs, um, but they're setting up everything. This is their whole operation. In my case, it is Hattie. She is the main person who runs this whole whole syndicate. She's the crime boss. And under her, she has a um, whole bunch of uh, others that are in charge of the more day-to-day -day operations, including someone in charge of coming up with new drugs, someone in charge of the distribution, and someone in charge of um, like big events around the drugs. So if you want a whole bunch of pre-made NPCs for this syndicate, remember you can buy Agnosi uh, for that. But 
Otherwise, think through who's going to be your boss, who are going to be your dealers, and what is their main uh, mode of dealing? Are they the ones who are out on the street corner, or is this only sold at specific shops where the buyer has to have a um, super secret password that maybe changes often, so that only the people in the know know how to get the product? However you do it, uh, think through your dealers and create those NPCs of who is going to have this product. That way, if your players want to buy it or they want to stop it, either way, they're going to have to kind of um, run down these dealers and figure out where to find this product. And then number five, we have users. There are a few things that you need to think through here um, because it, it's more than just people use the drugs. There are social classes that go along with this. Um, for each drug, it's kind of associated with a social class, just like it is in the real world. So which class is going to be using your drug? Is this an expensive drug that's only for um, the rich and the elite? <clears throat> that is going to influence where it can be purchased and uh, how it can be purchased. Is it a common drug for the common and everyday people? Again, that's going to influence where it is sold and how much it sells for. Next thing, you're gonna wanna come up with some nicknames, and this is always fun, nicknames for the drug addicts. Um, in my case, for Green Dragon, you have mush heads. Uh, come up with some telltale signs of an addicted person. Just like in real life, taking drugs has a physical toll, and you can most of the time tell um, who is addicted to a drug based on their appearance. So come up with those signs for drugs in your world as well. Um, for mush heads, they get really thin because they, they don't really have a desire to eat, um, because all they want is to live in this euphoric world. So they forego eating so that they can purchase the drugs. So they get very, very thin uh, and have very large eyes that are always dilated. And they're called mush heads because of um, the source of green dragon, which is myconids, which is very sad. Um, yeah, more about that in the ebook. So come up with what your addicts look like, where they might be located. Again, this has to do with social class uh, and those signs for um, an addict as well as the nicknames. And there you have it. Those are your five. You think through these different steps and you're going to create a really cool drug syndicate to include in your world. I would love to know if any of you have done this, uh, gone through and thought about these things or had this already in your campaign. Please leave those in the comments down below as they could help other DMs to come up with ideas. You're welcome to use mine and I do again encourage you to maybe take a look at Ignosi. Next time we are going to look at gambling syndicates so I will see you then. I certainly hope that this gives your game advantage and until next time my friends this is Halfling Hannah signing out. Huge thank you to my incredible Halfling heroes. These are our patrons at the Halfling Hero tier. You all are incredible, and I am so, so grateful for you. I hope that you guys are having a wonderful summer. And remember, if you haven't yet, be sure to join Discord to uh, join our Summer of One Shots. We've had one so far that was so much fun. We're getting ready to have another one on July 9th. I certainly hope that you can join join us for that. Another big shout out to our partners, as always, Woodworks Gaming and The Wanderer's Guide. Check them out in the description down below. And if you would like to purchase Ignosi, a link to that is down in the description below as well. Bye! Say